Oh, Father in heaven, thank you that you are a faithful God. You are faithful to your word, your Old Testament word that you would bring a Messiah, a Savior. You brought that Savior. You are faithful to your word that he will come again to claim this world for his own. Uh, we eagerly, eagerly await him. Lord, now as we turn to our time around your Lord's table, we pray that you would help us to remember him well. We pray that you would grant us your grace towards that end. And we pray it in his name. Amen. Well, as we gather together for our time around the Lord's table today, we're going to be looking at a passage in which Jesus explains that the right way, the most accurate way, the true way to measure him is to examine his teachings. So if you have a Bible with you, would you turn with me to John chapter 18? We're going to be looking at verses 19 to 21. And if you don't have a Bible, some men are going to be coming down the aisles. Simply raise your hand and they will get one to you. And if you don't actually own a Bible for yourself, please keep this as our gift to you so that you can begin reading God's word for yourself. The setting here in this passage is that Jesus has been arrested. And he is at the house of Annas, who is at the high priest. He is the father-in-law of the high priest, Caiaphas. And um, for the last week, Jesus has been teaching in the temple, and he has been gaining many followers. And those followers have been losing from the Pharisees, and they know this. And they would like nothing more than to dispose of Jesus as quickly and as expediently as possible. So they arrest Jesus, and they convene an overnight illegal trial. And the purpose for that overnight illegal trial is to expedite Jesus' unjust murder. So as we read this passage, I want you to be looking at two things. Uh, in verse 19, be looking at Caiaphas' question to Jesus. And in verses 20 and 21, examine Jesus' response to that question. So let's read verses 19 to 21 together. The high priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. And Jesus answered him, I have spoken openly to the world. I always taught in the synagogues and in the temple and where all the Jews come together. And I spoke nothing in secret. Why do you question me? Question those who have heard what I spoke to them. They know what I said. A question from Caiaphas is in verse 19. It's, tell me about your teaching and tell me about your disciples. This is not some question on Caiaphas' part to satisfy some kind of idle curiosity. This is not because Caiaphas did not know what Jesus had been teaching and speaking about in the temple for the last week. Caiaphas knew all of those things. Uh, this was a deliberate attempt on Caiaphas' part to get Jesus to incriminate himself. Jewish law was set up such that a man was not allowed to be convicted of any crime based on his own commitment and his own confession of himself. There needed to be hard evidence. There needed to be clear evidence against the man. And Caiaphas knew that he didn't have anything on Jesus, so he was attempting to get Jesus to incriminate himself. But we focus our attention on what Jesus says in verse 20. He says, My teaching has always been in the place of public worship for the Jewish people. Nothing has been done in secret here. Many of these Jews have heard my teaching. There's nothing at all secret of what is happening. Uh, so don't ask me to incriminate myself. Ask the people what they've heard from me. They know what I've said. So what Jesus is saying here is, let the content of my teaching determine my guilt or my innocence. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read three statements that Jesus made in the last week of his life that will help us understand a little bit more about his teaching. They're all made within the last week or so of his life. The first one is from John 11, verses 41 and 42. Jesus has just raised Lazarus from the dead, and he's praying. And he prays, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but because of the people standing around, I said it so that they may believe that you sent me. And in the temple a few days later, just before the Passover feast, Jesus again is speaking out. He's speaking strongly in John chapter 12. We're going to look at verse 46. And he says something about himself here. He says, I have come as light into the world so that everyone who believes in me will not remain in darkness. I've come as light, so that everyone who believes will not remain in darkness. Two verses later, he goes on to say this. He who rejects me and does not receive my sayings 
as the one who judges him. The word I spoke is what will judge him on the last day. So Jesus' was teaching was very, very clear here. Teaching in the last week of his public ministry, and in the last week of his life, he said that he was the light of the world. He said that he was sent into the world from the Father, and he said that his teaching about himself, the gospel message embodied in himself, is what will judge a man at the last day. And this is what we want to remember about Jesus today, that he was the light. He was the light in a spiritually dark and hopeless world. And that light is that he came into this world sent from the Father so that he could hang on a cross and receive in his own body God's judgment against everybody who would believe in him, everybody in all of human history who would believe in him. And after receiving in his body their sin, he would receive God's judgment against them for their sin and the offense that it is against him. So if you are here this morning and Jesus is your Savior and your Lord, you are no longer in spiritual darkness, but you see the light because you believe the testimony of Jesus that he has made about himself. Would you join us in celebrating the Lord's table this morning? When the elements come to you, simply take them and hold them and remember these teachings about Jesus. Remember what he said about himself, that I have been sent here from the Father and that I am the light and my words themselves will judge the unbeliever on the last day. And then as you examine the words of Jesus, remember what it is that he's done for you as he hung on that cross for six hours and he served in a place that would take us an infinite amount of time to serve. And that is done to satisfy the Father's wrath against everybody who would believe in him. And then when you've prepared your heart, take the elements on your own. But if you're here today and you know that Jesus is not your Lord, he is not your master, the evidence of your life is that you are not a follower of Christ. I want you to know something, that we're very glad you're here. We're glad you're here to witness what the, the worship of believers looks like. We're glad you're here to hear the reading of the word and hear the teaching of the word. But we want you to understand that this time is a time for believers. It's time for people who have made Jesus Christ their Lord. And it is the objective of their life to follow him and submit to his lordship over their life. So when the elements come to you, just pass them by to the next person. But use this time well. When uh, others are receiving the communion message and they're receiving the elements, take time to examine Jesus' claims. Examine his claim that he actually was sent into this world from God the Father. That he was God incarnate and he came here sent from God. And that he had a message. And that message is that he will save everyone who puts their trust in him. And so I want you to just take this time to observe that. Everybody else, when the, you've had time to prepare your heart, uh, take the elements on your own and come and serve us.